board. Okay, folks, this is for English 201. The rain is getting in our way. Some of us are in trouble. A few people got in touch with me saying they didn't know when they would get here. But better late than never. Okay. Uh, first, our last big wrap up lecture can be found on, guess what? YouTube. Uh, and there's one for English 211, yes? If you, okay, here we are. It's on the board, HTTP colon slash slash UTU dot BE slash capital W lowercase D S Z R O S four W N one H E. Yes. And can somebody just check that now to find out if that is the English 201? Anybody with a magic phone or an iPad, you can check it now. Just to make sure that that is our own, the English 201. Yes? Can we? Mm -hmm. Okay. And for those of us who have an interest in English literature, there's a big one there, another one on the English 201. Okay. All right. We have some problems then. Is it the right one, Josh, or you're not ready yet? Mm -hmm. Is it, um, we had a few problems, did we, with the last question on the quiz, the quiz that we're working on to try to hand in on Friday, yes? And... Can we deal with that right now? Okay. Um, as I said to you previously, I've given you my I've given you my email address and my phone number. Does this mean that you're having a problem? You should not be shy, you should email me. Yes? Or call or text message. Okay? Do I expect you to magically be able to handle all the challenges immediately? Of course not. If we could, there would be no need for us to be on earth right here. We'd be up in heaven. Isn't that the truth? Okay. Now we have the poem, Love Story, attached to Young Bulls on the Loose. And uh, somebody said to me that we're having problems with the quiz question that said, a poem within a poem, a story within a story, yes? Okay, how many of us were having that same problem? Mm -hmm. What did I mean? Yeah, Josh, is that the right address? Okay. Has it come up? No. Not yet? It's not working. Oh, he said tonight, that check on it tonight, and you, the time frame, a little more time was needed, okay? Could I borrow somebody's own, please? What do they mean oh, by a poem within a poem and a story within a story? Did we get lots of poems about love, the various forms of love? Yes or no? Of course. We got love after love. We got love story. We got my mother, may I, for my mother, may I inherit half her strength. And are these writers, and then we got poems about the love of a father towards a son, yeah? Love represented in, in being in the person's life, quality time, as opposed to trying to buy love with material things, yes? Which, of course, as we may know, will not work. It might work for a short time, but not for a long time. Isn't that the truth? Okay. Then in the poem Love Story, did we see irony again, a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, form of communication, which we've talked about, good afternoon there, which we've talked about in detail, haven't we? Thank you very much, yes? Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, um, 
Let us have a look then at love story again. Yes. Uh, was it a poem that was quite provocative? Yes or no? Of love story. Yes. And why did I put it along with the Nettlefoot essay? Nettlefoot talks to us. Sorry. Nettlefoot talks to us in some detail about false values that are learned by young men in the Caribbean as a result of the young bull, thank you, the young bull philosophy. Ironically, however, is this young bull philosophy one that is actually bred into these Caribbean men by guess who, mama? Yes? Now we know from psychology and from Greek mythology as well. Can I just, just turn this one off then since? Uh, we know from Greek mythology we've heard about the Oedipus complex. You know the expression, the Greeks had a word for it. Yes? In other words, we today know that a great deal of modern English has come from Greek, Latin, Spanish, French, Anglo-Saxon, yes? And could that explain perhaps some of the irrationality of English grammar? Maybe, yes. But the truth is that the Greeks always had a word for everything. Theirs was a culture that was in search of what? Philosophy, in search of explanations of life, Yes? And did the Greeks have a myth, a legend, about a man named Oedipus, who by mistake, but nonetheless it happened, had married his mother. But he didn't know she was his mother, because he had originated somewhere else, and had children with her. Yes. And when he found out what had really happened, what did Oedipus do? He was then king. And the book, the play, the big Greek play that talks about it was called Oedipus Rex, Oedipus the King. And of course, O-E-U-D-I-P-U-S, Rex. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And of course, when he found out what had happened, that his children were actually his brothers mm -hmm. and sisters, uh, what did he do? He was so overwhelmed that he actually gouged out his own eyes, suggesting that this was a sin that you didn't even want to look at. In other words, it was just the unforgivable, the unthinkable, the unimaginable. But of course, along came Sigmund Freud, whom you will hear about in psychology. Yeah, who is seen as the great, great, great grandfather of modern psychology. And Freud actually borrowed from the Greek mythology and talked about the Oedipus complex, which is the bond between the mother and the son. Yes? And I'm sure you've met these people called Mama's Boys. And I'm sure you've met these people who absolutely believe no woman in the world can cook as well as mama. No woman in the world is as beautiful, wonderful, caring, wonderful, lovable as mama. Mama is just the epitome of excellence in womanhood for these people. Uh, is it still working? Just check for me, please. Yeah. Yeah? I think so. I hope. Okay. So... Excuse me, folks. Is it still working? You yeah? Put in the code? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Sorry, folks. It, um, making friends with this thing, you know? Okay. Uh, so in actual fact, then, does Greek mythology, as well as Freud, do, do Greek mythology and Freud actually give us some background information on this mother-son bond? Yes or no? Nettleford says that the black matriarch, she doesn't have to be black, she can be Caribbean, 
because maybe the same exists throughout the Caribbean, yes? She doesn't have to be black, that is of the Negro race. Remember, we spoke about the fact earlier on that the term black is not a pejorative. It's not an insultive statement. It's purely descriptive in terms of the Negro race, but the Negro race appears in many different colors. Okay, yeah, we don't have to go through that again, do we? Uh, no, of course then, if mama is such a powerful influence on young men, can that influence be used for good or ill? Yes. Now, Nettlefoot says that the bond, the Oedipal bond really between the Caribbean mother and son has been used in a dualistic way. What do I mean by this? That's his theory, one of his theories. Namely, she has one law for the sons, one law for the daughters. Exactly. The daughters are repressed and oppressed, I think, yes. They are tied to domestic duties. They are taught to be obedient, caring, you know, nice girls. And nice girls do not say no. Nice girls always do what mama says. Yes? Nice girls learn to cook, clean, wash, do their homework, look after the younger children. Nice girls, in other words, are totally obedient and caring. Somebody's out there, please. Okay, can we, somebody open? Okay. And the nice girls then are, as he puts it, primed for motherhood. They are tied to domestic chores. Now, good afternoon. One flip side of this is, of course, what? That, as we said last time, perhaps, that in actual fact, if you look around in major banks, major corporations, restaurants, all kinds of businesses, you will notice that many, 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 many important roles and jobs are performed by, guess who? These same nice girls when they grow up, sometimes when they're teenagers. Why? Because when they're tied to domestic duties, as he puts it, do the young women learn a number of skills that serve them well in the workplace, of course. They learn time management, they learn self-discipline, plus they learn how to cook clean, wash, iron, they also learn how to read and write because not only do they have to do their homework, they have to help the younger ones with their homework. Do they also learn people management skills when they're busy looking after the younger brothers and sisters? Yes or no? Of course. In the meantime, dualistically speaking, Nettleford says the boys are given what? This dangerous freedom to roam and to... Um, develop their sexual prowess with as many women as possible. Uh, a euphemism for sleeping around, yes? Okay. Now, of course, is this going to mean that the boys and the girls, the males and the females, are also going to learn very opposite, very different sexual values? Of course. Now, will these opposed sexual values lead to conflicts when these people should be developing relationships of a mature kind. That would lead to, you know, a lifelong partnership, a lifelong commitment. Yes or no? Of course. Does love story then by Mervyn Morris use powerful irony and also the sardonic tone to show us how these opposed value systems actually fracture or even make impossible good relationships between the Caribbean men and women. Yes or no? Now the question then uh, was, what is that last question about on the quiz? A story within a story, a poem within a poem. What did I mean? Yes? Yeah? Some of us emailed me to say they were having a problem, and I said, well, if you're having a problem, lots of other people are having the problem, please, don't be shy, let's talk about it. Do I read the emails that you send me, and should you feel shy about sending them, or should you let me know if there are problems? Yes or no? 
Let me know, please. Okay. Uh, let's look at this one. Do we all have love story in front of us? Yes? Love story. Love gave her eyes. The tough man snatched. Locked them up tight. In other words, he doesn't want his, her to see that the world is full of all sorts of interesting things and people. He wants her to see only him and only what he wants to expose her to. You understand? Is this why some Caribbean men and men in general expose, uh, oppose education for the women in their lives? They get very upset when you people start going to college. High school, okay, but college, no. Yes? Or they get envious. Okay. Lock them up tight. Love gave her hand. The tough man tickled it early one night. Do you have this thing here in Cayman where you just stroke the palm of somebody's hand? It's a sexual gesture. Yeah, they have it. Yeah. Or is it only a Jamaican traditional thing? Um, in school, yeah. In Jamaica, when I was growing up, it, it was. I remember Morris, the poet, is from Jamaica. It's a sexual gesture. You know, it means I want to get next to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, in other words, the tough man doesn't want her to see all the wonders and miracles of life, but he wants an immediate sexual relationship. Yes? Is sex a form of control? Yes. As seen in many of these works, of course. Love gave her tongue. The tough man found it tasted right. Love gave her tongue to talk with. He doesn't want to hear what she says. He just wants to kiss her. Love gave her body. The tough man smiled and switched off the light. Love gave her heart. Heart represents what? Emotional commitments, deep emotions, feelings. The tough man fled. Flaxed with fright. Now flaxed, you may have looked up in the dictionary. It means what? weak, feeble. And is it a word that's often used with a sexual inference attached to it? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So the idea is that the macho man is interested in sex and in sex as a form of control. But he is not interested in commitment, the commitment that comes from the heart's deepest emotions. When these surface, he disappears, he runs. Okay, now we saw that message. It's highly ironic and is the tone of our invisible fly on the wall, third person narrator, also very ironic. Yes or no? Of course. But is there a contradiction here being pointed out between, by the writer? using the third person observer. Namely, do these two people have two very different and conflicting views of what is going on between them? The female thinks this is love. The man thinks, oh, great sex, who is next? Yes. You get the point. Mm -hmm. So, are these opposed sexual values then part of or products of an opposed upbringing? In other words, do we learn our sexual values from early days? And if the mother is so much of an influence on the young bull, has he in fact learned those negative sexual behaviors from guess who? Mama. 
Now, does Nettleford tell us why mothers would teach this kind of negativity? Because they believe in it. Maybe it's what they themselves grew up with. They don't think there's any other way for a man to be a man, in quotation marks. Yes? And also, did Nettleford tell us this at the beginning of his essay? He is never allowed to forget that he is his mother's son, and he would la he must be responsible for the survival of his own future family as well of, as that of his mother, who expects him to look after her in her old age. But where is her husband? Gone or non-existent? Exactly. Remember the Bohemian poem. Poem for mothers. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So the question then is, my friends, are we looking at a powerful connection between Morris and Nettleford? Do they both seem to have a conversation going on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But listen to this. A poem within a poem, a story within a story. Love gave her eyes, and love gave her hand. Love also gave her tongue, and then love gave her body. And finally, love gave her heart. Is that the female's version of the story? Yes? Is that how she has experienced this relationship. She is motivated by what? Love, not lust. Is it very, very different from the male's version of this experience? Has he, he, has he got a whole different set of values? Of course. And can we look at it this way? The tough man snatched. The tough man tickled it. The tough man found, the tough man smiled, the tough man fled. Does it tell the story from his point of view? That's how he experienced it. <clears throat> and he experienced these things in this way because, of course, his sexual values do not allow him to connect sex with love or with emotional, deep emotional feelings and commitment. Yes? Okay, can we do it again? Locked them up tight early one night, and it tasted right. So, switched off the light, flaxed with fright. Do you understand then what we mean by a poem within a poem, a story within a story? Yes or no? Hey, sitting here talking to myself. No. Yeah. No. Sorry, no, not yet. If we read the first line of each verse, does it tell us the girls, the ladies' version of the story? Then if you read the second line of each verse, we get the male version. And if you read the third line of each verse, do we get the picture perhaps as the fly on the wall sees it. Yeah? This is how it happened. Does this make sense now? Let's just accept that yes, it is a poem within a poem and a story within a story. Can we just take that on faith? Fair enough? Yes or no? Okay. Any other questions uh, on our quiz that we've been working on, the big quiz? <coughs> Sorry? The one that you were looking for as one? Was it a, a question or something that the investigator for ourselves? Well, both really, isn't it? But it was a question on the last page at the bottom. Yeah. 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 In other words, well, it, it, it's a question, but let's not think of it simply in terms of grades. Think of it as, as you put it, Christina, in terms of something we want to investigate for ourselves, yes? Yeah? Okay, 
Was there any other aspect of the Nettlefoot essay that proved to be problematical? Any other aspect of the quiz that we're having trouble with? Yes or no? Um, the last part. Could I borrow yours, please? Mm -hmm. could, could I borrow yours? Mm -hmm. Somebody. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you. The quiz. Um, you're talking about this? Love after love? Yes? Yes, when it says write up to a full time. That is really another assignment, isn't it? What do I want from you on Friday? The Nettlefoot quiz that I gave you last time. Yes? Uh huh. Okay, but tell me, this question that's attached to the Walcott poem, Love After Love, if you were the speaker of this message, who or which type of man or woman would be your best audience? Love After Love, which tells the listener, feast on your life. Female. Huh? What, or what type of person? Would it be limited to one gender, no. Natasha? No. No? What type of person? Someone who just went through a breakup or a... Somebody who just, just ended went through a bad breakup, had a bad ending to a love relationship. Somebody who is depressed. Insecure. Somebody who is lonely and insecure. Low with low self-esteem. <laughs> Somebody who has been in an abusive relationship. Um, one person in another group said it could be to somebody who has, in actual fact, lost a loved one for whom they cared very much. This, maybe this person has died and they were, was, this person was ill for a long time and they were looking after this person for a long time. And a lot of their self-esteem was wrapped up in trying to help that person, feeling they could even make them not die. Interesting interpretation, yes? Okay. Uh, but who are the characters so far that we have met on this course entirely who we need, feel need that advice based on your life? The boy's mother. The boy's mother. Why, my friend? She's the Earth Mother figure. She is the rock of Gibraltar, isn't she? Yes? Every, people come to her for help. Mrs. Herrera goes running to her every two minutes. Isn't that the truth? Yes? And the boy relies on her to be the stabilizer in his life. When his father's substitute hat disappears on the horizon, yes, his mother is still there. Yes? So, definitely, she's the giver. She's the person who is constantly giving. Yes? Does she need now to feast on her own life? To enjoy her own life? Yeah? Which other character have we met that we would say this to? For my mother. For my mother, may I inherit half her strength? That mother figure, yes. She's the victim, yes. She's the earth mother. She's the worker, the nurturer, yes. Has she ever had a life of her own since she married this, 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 this philandering man? <coughs> no. Does she need, when he's dead, thank God, he's gone, uh, to feast on her life? Yes or no? No, you think I'm being cruel when I say, thank God he's gone. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else? Any other character? Heather, you're very quiet in the back there. Heather? Sarah. Sarah. And yeah. Heather? Heather and Sarah, you've been awfully quiet today. Usually you talk more. We haven't heard from you today. Okay, 
I'm my own person now. I need to do something for myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, generally speaking then, are these female characters, but you said, Natasha, it could be a male as well. In other words, you are saying that men also suffer from heartbreak and abandonment issues. Okay. Is there another question then that was a problem to us? Mm -hmm. On page three of the Nettleford Quiz. Mm -hmm. Synecdoche. What does synecdoche mean? Have we had time to reach to this yet? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We use the part to represent the whole. When Sir Winston Churchill gave his famous <coughs> inaugural address uh, to rally the British people against the onslaught of Hitler, the Second World War. He said, I have nothing to offer you but blood, toil, sweat, and tears. Blood? It's a part representing the whole. The whole is war. Bloodshed. Sacrifice of human life. Yes? Tears. Sadness, loss, anguish, emotional suffering. Yes? Yeah? Sweat. Struggle, the hardest thing we've ever done is what we are going to have to do. Was that his me message to the British people? Did it work? Yes. He appealed to their, he spoke to their what? Their idealism. Do you understand the synecdoche? Is it like a second cousin to symbolism? Yes or no? We got our handouts on figurative language, didn't we, at the beginning? Okay. Is there any other problem? Yeah, Asha? No, me. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. The same one, I, I, I don't totally understand, like, do we write an actual answer? Which one, there? A, a poem within a poem? Do you circle it? So do we choose which one it is? Poem within a poem or a story within a story? Could it be both? Yeah. And then do we, like, explain why it's both? Or no, just circle it. Just, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. But what do I mean, Christina, when I say this is a metaphor or a paradigm for the conflicts between Caribbean males and females and their opposed sexual and emotional values? Does this poem give us a metaphor for these conflicts? It calls it a love story, but is it actually being ironic or even sardonic? Definitely sarcastic. Is this a love story or is this a heartbreak story? If from the woman's point of view, it's a heartbreak story. From the man's point of view, it's just another. Story. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, do we understand what we mean when we say it's a metaphor? What's a paradigm? A pattern? A model? A pattern which serves as a model for something else. Is that what a metaphor does? Is a metaphor another way of putting something else? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. You say you're so hungry you could eat a house. What you really mean is, well, it's actually a hyperbole too, isn't it? Because it's a dramatic exaggeration. You could not eat, eat a house. But that's how you feel. Is that um, another way of putting, I'm really, really hungry. It's been a long time since I've eaten something. Yes? Fair enough? Any more questions? Yes or no, my friend? Yes, dear. Yes. Can we send our thesis paragraphs for the essays to me? by Sunday night, yeah, okay. Sunday afternoon, yes, so that I can start responding to them. Um, Sunday afternoon is for work, oh dear. Yes, they, Christina. Um, use, um, can you use, can you use both Naipaul's book and the poems? Yes. 
And am I going to stop reading after three and a half or four pages? No. In other words, if you have something to say and you wish to develop it further, say it. Yes? One lady over there has talked to me about the images of the females. And I said to you, that's the beginning of your big essay too, isn't it? Because you're going to find that when you come to the seven-page essay, that in actual, you know, call it the big essay, uh, there's going to be a lot of overlap, isn't there? Of course. All right, how many of us are finding that if we think up a topic of our own, it's actually going to take us more than three or four pages. Did we say the minimum was three type pages, double spaced? Yes. Do you have a handout that says reminders for better essay production and project writing? Talks to you about margins and such things. Do you have the easy writer as well? Yes. I told you if you had bought it, do not lend it to anybody. Yes. People do not return books. Okay. What is it then? Most people don't anyway. You know what I mean. What is it then we're looking at? Uh, is it a continuing discussion that we're going to find ourselves in a conversation with these writers? If you have a topic of your own that you wish to address, can you write me an email and say, I want to start on this. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Any more problems? Asha? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. If you can't choose one of the topics that I have given you, Question there, this, uh, um, Natasha? Not Natasha. Um, Natasha? She's asking a question. Yes, there. It might be of interest to you. Uh huh. Yeah, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Suppose you have two topics that you cannot simply combine together usefully. If you try to combine them, it will get way out of hand. Yes? You know, it will keep exploding. Uh, you can't choose. What's the solution? Try to write thesis paragraphs for both of them and send me the two. The one you're having the most difficulty nailing down a thesis for is probably the one you should not do at this point. Yes or no? Okay. Fair enough. Anything else? Yes, dear. Are you going to give us new topics for the... The big papers, yes, of course. So, we are going to do the new one Cheyenne is doing. Women? Uh-huh. That would be kind of... Asha, where are you? Thank you, dear. Uh, those of us who want to do the images or the portrayals of women, yes? You may simply want to limit yourself to the Naipaul book. Why do I say that? Maybe, you could, yeah. maybe we could say from the Naipaul book and then do like one poem. Is that right? Or maybe one poem. But if you try to do something like images of women or images of men and use the whole portfolio, is that in actual fact going to take much more than three and a half or even four pages? Yes. And can I throw something else at you? If in actual fact, you're looking at images of women in any detail, are you inevitably going to have to get into some aspects of the images of the men? In the sense that 
the male and female principle are shown as intertwined. Would you agree with that? Yes. How many of us have read then the essay called The Female Principle? Yes. And do we want to discuss that next time? Is she a little bit abstract, a little bit general? Yes? Perhaps that was the only way in which she could build a thesis without taking millions of pages, if you know what I mean, to put it in a general way. But shall we read that one for next time? Yes or no? Any other problems? Yes or no? OK. Ladies in the back, problem? OK. Can we just do this register really, really fast, please? I think we missed it last time. Uh -huh. Hello, folks. Just tell me. Uh, remember, say it loudly. Answer yes or no loudly. And what else? Are you listening there? Please, hello. Please, please. Ladies, today's the... Second, yes. Okay. I think we didn't do it last time, so can we do it now? Hello, friends. Remember, say yes loudly for me. Okay, so Friday was the 30th, I think. Whatever. Okay, Claudine, all the time. Uh, Martico, all the time. Just say yes loudly for me, please, dear. Shia, all the time, yes. Tonian, all the time, yes. Shona Lee, all the time, yes. Roberto, we have to do it over there, and we have to give those over there to those people. Heather, all the time.